Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here. Uh, this is an early video. There's going to be another video following this one later on this afternoon, but it's uh, it's about midnight, and um, I was just watching some videos on YouTube, and I saw Ben's video, Ben Mall, uh, who I I like, a good friend, and uh, Ben has a, a tool restoration channel. And what happened was Ben, uh, I'll put the link in before uh, down below, and Ben had a little issue with the crescent wrenches, and he had an issue that we've all had, and it's uh, and I want to address it. So because I'm sure if Ben has it, anybody doing restorations has come across this or might come across it, and uh, you know there's no reason that you know to be frustrated over something like this because. There's a way around it, so let's get to it. And uh, I'm no expert, but uh, let me tell you what I found okay, real out. Real quickly, I had to dig into, a, this is just one of the boxes I have of adjustables. And you know, you talk, Ben, about uh, about when you, you're starting off, you know, there's certain things. I, I did this, this was an early restoration of mine, a speed nut wrench I found. And look, I didn't even know how to straighten the jaw out back then. That's, you know, so we all, little by little, you learn certain things about uh, restorations and whatnot. Let me look at uh, these wrenches and see what, uh, what we Okay, do. most crescent wrenches or adjustable wrenches all have this thumb wheel here, and that puts a little bit of a torque on a pin. And this pin that's in there, uh, it's either threaded in like this one here, it's a screw, or it's, sometimes it's just a regular pin without even a screw in it. Now, the one thing you'll notice here is that there's two pin marks, one there and one there. And that's so that this pin won't back out. And a lot of times they do back out over the years like this one here. This one here is on its, it's starting to back out on its own, you know, and, and people, you know, don't even realize it sometimes or they'll just try and screw it back in. But, and that even has a small, one small P mark you could see over here has one small P mark, but it wasn't enough to keep it in. Um, this was a problem and, uh, th these pins were made to go in once and stay in. That's it. However, if you want to service the wrench like we do, you have to find a way to get these out. Now, when you have something like this, you say, now you could put a heavy duty screwdriver on there, but if those pin marks are in too deep and they're, uh, they're too pronounced there and there, you're going to strip that screw before it comes out. So here's what you have to do. Now, if you think the crescent wrenches are a problem, look at the bottom of these auto wrenches that I like so much. Now, all of these, except for one, are pinned. Only one of them is a screw. And all of these are pinned in so that you, and you can see it here, let me move this around. You can see there, they're pinned in so that you have to address that before you can get that pin out. These are always a pain. And uh, let me show you the best way I Okay, can. here's a mock-up of exactly what's going on. The wood will represent the body of the wrench, and we have our screw in there. You can see that's the uh, a metal uh, rod that I have in there. And you can see that it's been peened over here so that that can't back out, so that it won't uh, release. But you want it to release now because you got to service the wrench. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get rid of all this area over here and over here that's peened over. You got to unpeen it. Now, how do we do that? There's a couple different ways. If you uh, could get a punch and you could punch it this way and, you know, unpeen it that way, or you could take a little Dremel tool and run a Dremel tool in here and widen that gap up here. That's usually the easiest way. And a lot of times you could do it through uh, with a little bit of heat. Um, the first thing you should always do before anything is that this screw should be able to turn where you're going to have your problem as this gets further out. But you should always address this the uh, the wrench with a little heat. Now I'm going to take an example here and I'm going to hold it over here and I'm going to turn it. And I want you to look at the peened area. You see how the threads are squished over? That's to stop that from backing out. Same thing on the other side. You'll see it, it deforms the threads. Now the only way you could straighten it out is either... Uh, if you want to use the screw, you're going to have to, the best thing to do is to apply a little bit of heat to soften them up and then slowly back out the screw. And I'll show now you I'm how to show that. you the steps I go through one by one when I first get a wrench and want to take it apart. The first thing I do is I look at the screw, make sure it's not mangled or anything. And I take a dental pick. Now, if you don't have a dental pick, you can make something out of, uh, you can make something out of any, a pin, bend a pin or whatever. But the first thing you want to do is scrape out, make sure there's no gunk in that slot because you need a good set you need a good purchase on that screw if you're going to get it out then i go around the thread make sure there's no 
nothing around the corners here. So now that I got that nice and cleaned out, now I go to step two. Okay, the next step, if you don't have a good gunsmithing set, it's really a good uh, buy to pick one up. But this isn't a gunsmithing set. This is just a 30-bit hand driver set. But this is where you're going to go through all the screwdrivers that you own in order to get one that has the best the best fit. Now, this one here, just a little bit of wobble. But if I go to my set here, I can pick one out here like this. And this one fits. Look at that. It fits nice and tight. That's the way you want it to fit. You don't want any slop or wobble. And that's what you need. Now we're going to go to step three. Okay, step three, just going to be heat. All you're going to do is, if you don't have a torch, a propane torch is a good thing. I know you have one, Ben, but a lot of people, you might. If you don't have a torch, a light or anything, just get some heat on that area. Not too much. Just enough. What that will do is that'll break, that'll expand the uh, screw and uh, and break any bond that might be there. But just a little bit of heat there. Like I said, you don't want to get it cherry red or too hot. Just enough to warm Next, it up. you want to mount your, uh, your <clears throat> crescent wrench securely into the vise. And uh, you want to make sure it's nice and tight. Your vise is bolted down. You're going to put your screwdriver into that slot of the screw, making sure you got a good set. And you're going to press down very hard. And I'll show you how. Okay, what I like to do is I like to put a lot of weight onto here. I put my hand on top of the screwdriver like this, pressing down and using my hand like this to torque and just give it a slight turn like that until you see. And we have a little bit of movement there. And let me show you the movement. Okay, now you see the movement there? We're moving the screw. Okay, now that's great. Now all we have to do is we'll put a little bit of oil on top of here. I like to use a penetrating oil and back it out. Now that's an important part and I'll show you. Okay, now that you have a little bit of penetrating fluid on there uh, or any oil, there you go. It's, it's good to go. Let's try a more difficult one. Now you one. can see that one uh, really wasn't difficult, but you see how easy it is. We'll put that back in, save it for another another day this will come out very easy now um the next time we have to now like you said ben a good idea is if you don't have a screwdriver that fits good you can grind down one. this one here is an old craftsman instead of throwing it out i ground it down to fit a particular screw and you could do that and really get a good fit on whatever screw you're working on. okay let's look at this nice wrench here here's a nice one these jaws aren't too mangled uh <laughs> Have you ever seen Jaws worse? See, this is the kind of thing that you pass by, you know, when you you don't buy this no matter what. I just happen to buy like a lot of them and one came in, but I can fix this. And I know it sounds crazy, but I could fix this that you would say, wow, it looks awesome. But I mean, look at it. That's a job. Anyway, this one here, you can see here, this one is a pin without the screw. Now, that's a, a pain. So the first thing you do is you back this all okay, the way I to the I think I top. spoke a little too soon on being able to fix this one. <laughs> Look at the back of that. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, here. You see here? Now we got that peened in area, but that there's a f pin in there, a floating pin. Now, what you want to do there, we take either the Dremel with a stone and, and go in there and widen that out, or you could just take a drill uh, that's just about the right size and drill that out. Now you've probably seen these vices before a lot of them here This is from 1942. Look at that October 15th, 1942 right uh, Right as uh, World War II was uh, just getting going and here we have it's a uh, this is a pretty much called a machinist vice or uh, It's a it's really handy and I'll show you why because now we clamp this in here But no what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it on its side like this see and that's what these vices are meant to do so now we have it on its side. I can clamp this to the table and then just rotate the table so that it's under the drill bit here. And uh, this way we can, it'll drill without spinning around. You could do it by hand, but it's very difficult. We're gonna use a little bit of oil and uh, see if we can drill that out. Okay, now you see we uh, got rid of all the side burrs that were holding it in. The pin is uh, freely moving. Now you could just knock it against a piece of wood and it'll pop out. But let's say you have one that's stuck in like you do. Let's say it's uh, it's in there, it's stuck, and you got to drill it out. Let's see what it'd be like to drill this pin out. Okay, you can see here we drilled a small hole in there and now we're going to use a, sc a screw extractor. Okay, here's something I hope you never in your life have to use a tool, <laughs> but uh, you pick these up uh, inexpensively. You can get them uh, 
at uh, just about any place that sells tools or industrial supply houses, uh, travers, things like that. And um, it's a, a screw extractor. And what it is, it's you can see these teeth. Now it's a left-handed thread. So what you, what you do is you tap it in. We take one like this. We put it into the hole and we give it a couple taps with a... Uh, just a slight brass hammer, just a couple taps to seat it, and then we unscrew it. And what happens is as this tightens up, it spins the screw the opposite way out. So let's try that. Okay, after uh, seating this down here, we can see one thing is for sure is that this pin is rusted to the uh, thumb wheel. So uh, there's only one thing we could do. We have to go to the uh, last and final um, resort, and I'll show you how that works. So. We tried this, it didn't work, no problem, we just go to the next. Okay, thing. we saw that it was uh, spinning with this. So the pin is rusted to the, the actual thumb wheel. So that's the problem. So no matter how much I turn on that, it's not gonna, it's free spinning, but it's rusted to this side. So the only thing we could do now is we take a Dremel cutoff wheel and go in between that little gap there on each side. So let's do that. Okay, oh, well, we're gonna mount a uh, Dremel tool. If you don't uh, have a Dremel tool, it's, uh, it's a rotary tool, it spins at a very high RPM. If you don't have one and you're gonna get one, I suggest you get a variable speed uh, because it, it does help the control a little bit. But this is a wafer wheel and that'll cut through just about anything. And we have a small gap here, as you can see, between the, the wheel and the, uh, there we go. You see that gap there? We're going to cut right there. We're going to cut that pin right off and see how that works. Now you can see the Dremel made easy work of cutting through the top half of that. But let's say you don't have a Dremel. We're going to use the bottom half. We're going to cut through with a regular hacksaw just to show you it can be done. Oh, you can see we're done here. We, uh, we cut through. Now you can see we just got to punch that out. That'll pop right out. The top one's a little more difficult to get out, but uh, again, we can, uh, this is part of the fun of uh, restoring the tools. Now, uh, we'll just knock that out of there and we can always make a new pin. Okay, so here was that nightmare pin. You could see we drilled into this end here, was the end we drilled into. And uh, that didn't work, so we had to uh, cut it out this way. And there's the three pieces, and uh, it's clear now. And you would just have to clean up, but we have an extra knurled ring if we ever need it. So, uh, But when you have the crescent wrench, you won't be able to get in there too much with the Dremel from the side because of the restriction of the space. So you'll have to do all your drilling from the top here. And uh, a left-handed drill is great. Remember, the threads are usually here. Some of them had the threads down here, but they're usually up here. So once you get past this area, that's it. You're home free. But uh, I hope that helps out. And I know it's a little difficult, but believe me, these are, these, you can't look at them as problems. Just look at them as a challenge. All right. Thanks very much. Take care. Hope this helps out. Bye-bye.